The elderly monk rings the bell, then walks over to a small Akita puppy named Hachi, gently picking him up. He gives Hachi a collar with his name on it, says goodbye, and places him in a wooden cage. Soon they're on the road, and Hachi embarks on a long journey, traveling by train through Japan and then by plane to another country, until he finally arrives at a bustling train station. While he's there, his cage falls from the carriage and breaks. Hachi decides to wander around the station, and eventually stops at the feet of a man, Professor Parker Wilson. The professor picks up the dog, looks around for an owner, and the professor takes Hachi to Carl, the station manager, but Carl says he can't keep the dog. With no other choice, the professor decides to take Hachi home. Carrying Hachi in one hand and his luggage in the other, he heads home. Upon arrival, Parker quickly places Hachi in his study, intending to keep him out of sight. Moments later, his wife Kate greets him, excited to see him, and unaware of the new guest. Tired from the day, the couple heads upstairs, with Parker still unsure how to tell his wife about the dog. But Hachi has other plans. He sneaks out of the study, follows them upstairs, and surprises Kate by nuzzling her toes. Startled, Kate screams and rushes out of the room, reminding Parker of their no pets rule. Despite Parker's attempt to explain, he promises Kate that he'll find the dog's owner and return him the next day. Parker then takes Hachi to the tool shed, setting up a makeshift bed for him. The following day, their daughter Andy, holding Hachi, tries to convince them to keep him, but Kate is firm in her decision. She even takes a photo of Hachi to make lost dog posters. Later, Parker brings Hachi to the pound, hoping they'll take him in temporarily, but the facility is full. Determined, Parker visits the library to ask Marianne, a librarian, if she might take Hachi, but her hostile cat makes it impossible. He also asks the food vendor and returns to the train station to check with Carl, but no one has reported a missing dog. As he makes the rounds, he hangs flyers, hoping someone will claim Hachi. With nowhere else to turn, Parker takes Hachi to work, where he is a music professor. During rehearsals, Hachi wanders around the stage, and Parker starts to enjoy having him around. Curious about Hachi's origins, Parker visits his old Japanese friend Ken and shows him a torn receipt he found with the dog. Ken explains that Hachi is an Akita, a breed renowned for its loyalty, and reveals that Hachi means number 8 in Japanese, a symbol of luck. Impressed by this, Parker officially names him Hachi. Ken speculates that Hachi might be a royal dog who somehow got lost. That night, tensions rise between Kate and Parker over Hachi, and things take a turn for the worse when Hachi accidentally destroys Kate's house model. Because of this, the professor keeps Hachi in the tool shed. Later that night, a storm brews, and worried for the dog, the professor brings Hachi inside the house. They spend the evening watching television together, sharing popcorn. The next day, the professor tries teaching Hachi to fetch a ball, but Hachi stubbornly refuses. Kate and Andy watch through the window, noticing how happy Parker is with Hachi. When Kate receives a call from a potential adopter, she surprisingly declines, realizing how attached her husband has become to the dog and that he would be heartbroken to see Hachi go. Time passes and Hachi grows into a fully mature dog, now inseparable from the professor. Whenever Parker leaves for work, Hachi digs a hole under the fence to follow him to the train station. Seeing this, Parker starts bringing Hachi back home to stay with Kate, who has now warmed up to the dog. Hachi is calm and content around her, and Kate has grown fond of him. One day, before Parker returns from work, Hachi leaves the house to wait for him outside the train station. When Parker arrives, Hachi joyfully jumps up on him, eager for some affection. The hot dog vendor at the station even comments on how Hachi had been waiting there for a while. Later, Andy visits Parker's house with her partner, Michael, a shy guy still adjusting around his future father-in-law. Trying to make a connection, Michael attempts to get Hachi to fetch a ball, but Hachi remains disinterested. Parker explains that Hachi isn't like other dogs and doesn't enjoy fetching. Still curious, Parker brings it up with his friend, Ken during their kendo practice. Ken explains that Akitas are a special breed, they can't be trained like other dogs. If Hachi ever fetches a ball, it'll be for a special reason, and his loyalty is a sign of his unique connection with Parker. Hachi becomes a beloved member of the family, even appearing in the family photo at Andy's wedding. But one day, when Parker arrives at the train station, Hachi isn't there. Worried, Parker rushes to a nearby theater where Kate is working on restorations to ask if she's seen Hachi. Kate hasn't, but before leaving, Parker compliments her work and they share an intimate moment. Back home, Parker eventually finds Hachi in the shed with a skunk. Attempting to avoid a disaster, Parker tries covering the skunk with a box, but it's too late. Both he and Hachi are sprayed. Reeking of skunk, Parker decides they both need a bath. When Kate comes home, she finds them in the bathroom, trying to wash off the smell. Later, Andy arrives to share the news that she's pregnant. She first tells Kate, who is thrilled, and they share a warm hug. Then, Andy goes to the shed to find Parker, who is giving Hachi a massage. He too is overjoyed at the news. Parker and Kate have been married for over 25 years, and he knows how tirelessly she's committed to her job, so he surprises her with a romantic evening.
evening. They share drinks and talk about their future together. As Parker heads to work the next day, he expects Hachi to follow him as usual. But to his surprise, Hachi doesn't move. Curious and a bit concerned, Parker walks over to calm him, then heads off to the station. Hachi, still unsatisfied, picks up a ball and follows Parker, catching up with him just before he boards the train. In a surprising moment, Hachi offers Parker the ball, and when Parker throws it, Hachi fetches it, a first for him. Parker is thrilled, sharing the news with Carl and the hot dog vendor Jazjit, who both celebrate the moment. Yet, Hachi doesn't want to see him leave, but... Parker just hugs him warmly and boards the train. Later that day, during a lecture, Parker shares a story with his students about a musician who didn't want his song recorded, saying that some things are better left as moments in time. Despite seeming off, he tries to continue but suddenly collapses. That evening, Hachi waits at the station for Parker, but he never arrives. Hachi waits until late into the night till Michael comes to take him home. The next day, Andy tries to comfort Hachi, telling him she'll care for him just as her father did. However, Hachi continues going to the station daily, faithfully waiting, even in freezing weather. One night, Carl, the station manager, tries to tell Hachi to go home, letting him know that Parker won't be returning, he passed away. As Kate eventually sells the house, Andy and Michael take Hachi in, but he soon runs away, following the train tracks to find his way back to the station. He shelters under an abandoned vehicle and waits at the station again the next morning. Locals, including Jaji, see the dog looking hungry and feed him, embracing him since he's such a beloved part of the station. Andy and Michael come to retrieve him later that day, but Andy soon realizes Hachi isn't happy. She tells him that she won't hold him back if he wishes to go. Sadly, she opens the door, and after a loving lick on her hand, Hachi returns to the station to wait for Parker. At night, he finds shelter under the same abandoned vehicle, while the locals bring him food daily. Over time, Hachi becomes a symbol of loyalty, beloved by travelers and locals alike. A reporter comes by, interviewing Carl about Hachi's story, and publishing a piece that brings Hachi national attention. People across the country send gifts and messages, touched by the loyal dog's story. Even Ken visits Visits, speaking to Hachi in Japanese and telling him to wait only if he truly wishes to. Nine years later, Kate returns to town and is stunned by the changes. She visits the now renovated theater she had worked on and meets Ken at Parker's grave. Hachi, now older with graying fur, still waits at the station. Kate finds him and shares a heartfelt moment with the loyal dog before parting. Kate's grandson, Ronnie, now 10 years old, learns about Hachi and the bond he shared with his grandfather. At Christmas, Hachi is seen lying at the station, aged and frail. In his final moment, he passes away, still waiting for Parker, and in the afterlife, the two are reunited. The real story of Hachiko, known as Hachi in Japan, is one of profound loyalty. Hachiko was an Akita dog, born in 1923 in Japan, and he is remembered for his remarkable dedication to his owner, Professor Hidesaburo Ueno, who was a professor at the University of Tokyo. Every day, Hachiko would accompany Professor Ueno to the Shibuya train station in Tokyo and wait for him to return from work. Sadly, in 1925, when Hachiko was around 18 months old, Professor Ueno passed away unexpectedly while at work and never returned to the station. Despite this, Hachiko continued to wait at Shibuya Station for his owner's return, showing up every day at the same time for nearly 10 years. Hachiko's loyalty touched the hearts of the local community and eventually gained national attention. He became a symbol of loyalty and devotion throughout Japan, and people from all over the country came to see him at the station. In 1934, a bronze statue of Hachiko was erected at Shibuya Station in his honor, and he was present at the unveiling. Hachiko continued to wait at the station until his death in 1935.